So we've got a really fun video today. This is about vitamin K2 in pork and something called coprophagy. And that means eating poop. Pigs love to do it. That's where the vitamin K comes from. I just wrote a new post on my blog called Sustainable Pork and Metabolic Health in China featuring coprophagy. It's the first post in my series on livestock agriculture. I'm very excited about the series. I want to talk about the value of livestock agriculture, both ecologically as well as from a health perspective, but also from an economic perspective and a historical perspective, and try to understand things like, why do we raise? Why, why are pigs raised in China? Why is the diet of China white rice and pork? Because there's a reason. It all works when you know it. Why is the dairy cow the main thing on the homestead? Questions like these really dig into why and how it all fits together. I'm Brad Marshall, author of fireinabottle.net. I am also the founder of firebrandmeats.com. At Firebrand Meats, we make pork that is low in polyunsaturated fat. You can go to firebrandmeats.com or you can just Google low PUFA pork, P-U-F-A, which means polyunsaturated fat. We make, we, we actually use waste products from the manufacture of pea protein isolate that's used in a lot of uh, food for humans. So we're recycling a waste product and that, that product is really, really, really low in polyunsaturated fat compared to corn or barley or other things that people would typically feed pigs on. And I'm using old genetics, Berkshire hogs. This is, Berkshire hogs make the famous uh, kur, kurobuta, I believe it is. Maybe I have one of the vowels wrong. Uh, black pork of Japan. This is the best pork in the world. I'm just actually, uh, shipping costs have gone up a lot. And so unfortunately I've had to raise some prices on some of the smaller packages. I'm just offering a larger freezer filler box to kind of offset some of those shipping price increases. It's a 30 pound box and it, it's going to be, it's going to be fantastic. Uh, we've got thick cut bacon in there. We've got thick cut jowl bacon, which if you've ever had jowl bacon, it's, it's awesome. Uh, I've got some, there's going to be links of fresh sausage. There's going to be ground pork. And of course there's going to be pork steaks, pork chops, and uh, rum steaks, which are actually out of the back leg, which often gets cured into ham, but the rum steaks are actually really good, uh, nice little cuts of pork that I really like. And that 30 pound box for the first 50 people that order, I'm gonna give a $30 discount to. So go to Firebrand Meats, buy the freezer filler. When you go to the checkout, just type in 30, T-H-I-R-T-Y, and you'll get $30 off and be one of the first people to support the new, uh, the new boxes and it's going to be awesome. Back to the article. So what I want to focus on is the vitamin content of pork. And the reason I wrote this article is that, so pigs were domesticated in China as well as in Turkey. So pigs have been domesticated in multiple places. They've been around in China for 10,000 years, roughly as domesticated animals and, and as wild animals before that. Pigs and rice are basically the staple foods of China, or pork and rice. And there's a reason for that. Pork, pigs live on the homestead. They can recycle the rice straw into manure to fertilize the next year's rice crop. They, the B vitamins in pork perfectly complement the vitamins in white rice. A problem with white rice is that it's lacking in thiamine. Pork is the single biggest source of thiamine in the world. The Chinese, they take their white rice, they they polish it, which means they remove the bran. They feed the bran to the pigs. Now the bran is high in thiamine, but the Chinese stopped eating the rice bran. You know, that would be brown rice, still has the bran on it, but they don't eat that, the white rice. And it's probably because the lectin content, the phytic acid content, there's some bad things in the bran that if you eat too much of it, it's a problem. So they've gone to feed eating white rice, they feed the bran to the pigs, the pigs eat that white rice, they concentrate the thiamine out of it, and then the Chinese have a little bit of pork with their, uh, with their white rice, and it complements the, the vitamin content. And pork also helps with vitamin B3, that's niacin, and vitamin uh, B2, that's riboflavin. And interestingly, riboflavin is FAD, 
So that is when we talk about FADHT, FADH2 inputs to the electron transport chain, that's complex two. So complex two requires FAD to, to, to function in your mitochondrial electron transport chain. A lot of other enzymes use FAD internally as an input. Uh, niacin, that's NAD. People who read the blog, you've heard me talk about NAD, uh, you know, ad nauseum at this point. And then thiamine is a necessary cofactor in basically all of your metabolism, especially pyruvate dehydrogenase, alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase. Thiamine is crucial for metabolic function. And so if you don't have those three, if you don't have those three vitamins, B1, B2, B3, your metabolism is just not gonna work. And so, and so that little, so the traditional Chinese farmers couldn't afford a lot of meat, but that little bit, that two ounces of pork a day really went a long way towards fulfilling their, their B vitamin status. And I talk about all of that in the latest article, Sustainable Pork and Metabolic Health in China. Now I wanna talk about vitamin K2, and this is the really fun part. So pigs often on the farm have, they have jobs. And this is, and this is traditional agriculture at its best. And, and you see the role, not that, that livestock on the farm is not just a food, it's also doing a job or it's doing many jobs. And, I'll, and I already said, one of the things the pigs do is they recycle the rice bran into usable food. They get the thiamine out of the, out of the rice bran. They take the rice straw, they use it as bedding, they poop on it, that becomes the fertilizer for the next year's rice crop. But the other thing that pigs have traditionally been used for in China is what is known as a latrine pig, which is exactly what it sounds like. So the outhouses in China for a long time, around 2000 years, have been built so that the business end of the latrine is accessible to the hogs. And they have an outdoor, they have an outdoor pen and the outhouse is elevated above it. And what happens is pigs love to eat poop, as it turns out. I kept pigs and cows together in a field and pigs eat, they have no favorite food than fresh, hot cow poop. As gross as that sounds, they love it. <laughs> they're, they're unique in that way. Um, but the pigs will do the same thing with human excrement. Uh, they will clean it right out of the latrines and then mix that and that, that becomes part of their manure. And the beautiful thing about that is the human waste gets recycled into hog manure, which is now safe to use in the fields without without the 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 path the potential pathogen burden if you were to take straight human manure and spread it into the rice fields. So pigs are really performing that's another service performed by pigs. The cool thing about that is that vitamin K2 is largely formed by bacteria in your gut. There's vitamin K1 that we can eat and that comes from green plants, etc. Vitamin K2 is different and it has a lot of other functions and it can be made by bacteria. And there's a lot of different versions of vitamin K2. There's what's called MK4, MK7, MK9, MK10. And the vitamin K2 itself has a ring structure, which is used to stabilize electrons, free radicals, things like that. That's why K2 is useful. It's a very redox active molecule. And it has this little tail and it can be different lengths. And basically the number after the MK is like the number of chain links that it has. So the MK10 has this lot, a lot longer fatty chain than the MK4 does. The bacteria make a lot of MK10. And it turns out that when pigs, so that, that MK10 is not well absorbed in your gut, but <laughs> if you uh, use the coprophagy route, um, the pigs end up absorbing a lot of the MK10 out of the excrement that they consume. Um, that's just how it is. And so pork winds up being one of the highest foods in vitamin K2, MK10. And vitamin K2 is a really interesting vitamin. Bacteria use it as part of their electron transport chains. In about 2010, it was reported that uh, in Drosophila, which are fruit flies, I worked in a fruit fly lab in 
college, so I'm always excited when it's Drosophila. Uh, Drosophila, they can use vitamin K2 in their electron transport chain, and basically it's it's working in parallel with uh, enzyme coenzyme Q10 to trans transfer the electrons through the electron transport chain and kind of keep your mitochondrial health going. Uh, there was a second paper that came out a couple years later that said that didn't happen, that vitamin K2 was not used as an electron carrier in mammalian cells, but they only used vitamin K2, MK4. And there are longer chain MK2s that are used in pork. Now, vitamin K2 in humans has been shown the more vitamin K2 you eat, the less likely you are to develop diabetes. And this was shown in a very large scale study in Europe. I think there were 80,000 people that they followed over time and showed that there's a very dramatic reduction with vitamin K2 and diabetes risk. Uh, another study uh, gave vitamin K2 supplements to athletes, uh, young athletes, and it improved their peak cardiac output by I think 12%. In recent years, 2020, um, 2021, 2022, uh, a series of papers came out showing that, so if you take these, these mice and you put them on a high fat diet, they develop insulin resistance, they have uh, low ATP production, their, their muscle fibers um, switch to a, a, a less oxidative type, so, so more glycolytic, so the muscle fibers are less capable of using oxygen, and that is the same thing that happens in human obesity. Um, obese humans and diabetic humans have less, their muscles are less able to burn oxygen. In a high fat diet mice, the same thing happens. If you supplement those mice on that high fat diet with vitamin K2, it reverses all of those trends. It reverses the, the, the insulin resistance, it increases ATP levels, and it, it uh, prevents the change of muscle fibers from oxidative fibers to glycolytic fibers. So vitamin K2, very recently, 2020 and I think 2022, these papers uh, came out, show huge improvements in metabolic, in, you know, in, in all metabolic features compared to mice fed this high fat diet that causes obesity. Lastly, uh, a paper just came out January of 2022, showing that uh, a lot of the problems with aging in rats could be minimized or eliminated with vitamin K2 supplementation. So vitamin K2 is, is really interesting. It seems to really affect mitochondrial function. Uh, it's a very redox, redox activated or redox active molecule. We're not sure <laughs> if, it, if it is involved in the electron transport chain, if it can substitute for CoQ10 in mammals, but it seems to really be doing something good. And pork is, the best source for vitamin K2, other than perhaps hard cheeses um, and a few other weirdo things. And so pork with its, with its thymine, niacin, MK2 is looking more and more like a superfood. And like I said, if you get pork that doesn't have all of the seed oils in it, that doesn't have all of the polyunsaturated fats, that's the pork you want. Uh, at Firebrand Meats, I'm now offering 30 pound box of freezer filler pork. Get that 30 pound box. Use promo code 30, T H I R T Y, save 30 bucks, and you will have that pork in just a couple of weeks. Thanks for watching.